Jim Webb, who was in the Democratic primary for president early on, uh, if you don't remember him, don't feel bad. Nobody does. <laughs> He's the guy who killed the guy. Remember that in the debate? So they, I don't know what the question was that they were asked, but he was like, yeah, the guy who uh, shot in Vietnam, but he's not around to talk about it. <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck? You're in a Democratic primary and you're bragging about killing somebody? Whoa. Uh, so anyway, this guy um, did an interview over the weekend with NBC, and he had some critiques of the Democratic Party that I wanted to share with you, and then we'll break it down. So here's what he said the problem is with the party. When you can't have a Jefferson Jackson dinner, which was a primary celebratory event of the Democratic Party for years because Jefferson and Jackson were slaveholders, they were also great Americans in their day. Something different has happened to the Democratic Party. The message has been shaped toward identity politics and they've lost the key part of their base. You've lost white working people. You've lost flyover land. And you saw in this election what happens when people get frustrated enough that they say, I'm not going to take this. There is an aristocracy now that uh, pervades American politics. It's going to be broken somehow in both parties, and I think that's what the Trump message was that echoed so strongly in these flyover communities. The Democratic Party has moved very far to the left. So, um, on there's two points he's making here. One of them is 100% wrong, and the other one is actually right. So, let's break it down. When he says the Democratic Party has, quote, moved very far to the left, that's just not true. Um, so the Democratic Party in Washington is probably the most right-wing it's ever been. Ever since the late 1970s, early 1980s, and onward, there's been a gradual creep to the right, and that's been because of the growing influence of money in politics. So Democrats are now taking corporate money and doing the bidding of the corporations. You have neoliberals who are in the Democratic Party against the conservatives in the Republican Party. So there's no real progressives, there's no real liberals. You have varying degrees of corruption and varying degrees of sellouts. So this is why you have even President Obama, who was viewed by the right as this far left kind of president. He did Obamacare, which is Romney care or Nixon care or Bob Dole care it was a right wing plan. Um, he cut small business taxes over a dozen times. He doubled the size of the market. Uh, he cut public sector jobs. So when you have Democratic presidents acting like moderate Republicans from the old days, no, that's not a party that has, quote, moved very far to the left. The whole problem and why Hillary Clinton lost is that she was too far right. She was a representative of the establishment and a representative of corporations. And her policies and her record showed that she wasn't a liberal or a progressive. She voted for NAFTA, or I should say she supported NAFTA. She supported TPP. Um, she supported and voted for the Patriot Act, the Iraq War. She's been hawkish on almost every point. She's been for almost all the trade deals. So her problem was that, that she lost, she has no trust among, you know, working people because her policies have been a disaster for working people. So that's the, the biggest point, and the biggest point where he's wrong is this perception that, well, the Democratic Party has moved far left. No, economically and on policy, they've moved to the right. And the solution is to go left. Where was all the enthusiasm in the primary with Bernie Sanders, who was the furthest left of the options? Now, uh, understand that far left in the Washington spectrum is actually moderate and centrist in the population. If you go by the polling data, the polling data shows when you go issue for issue, the American people are just simply progressive. They're just simply liberal. They want single payer health care. They want free college. They want to tax the rich more. They want a, the minimum wage to be a living wage. They want to stop all these unnecessary wars. So he's just wrong when he says the problem is that the party has moved very far to the left. That's just not true. Um, where he has a, where he has a point is on identity politics. So, there's been a, a bastardization of identity politics. Now, it used to be the case that when you bring up something in relation to identity politics, you're making a totally valid point. Like, for example, here's a valid point when it comes to identity politics. There was a study that found that 
when you have a, a resume that two resumes that are identical, one that has a traditionally sounding black name, the other that has a traditionally sounding white name, the white name gets, I think, over 50% more hits. So even with all the information the same, you have uh, something that is not just by random chance. The numbers show that it's not, it's not just random chance that people overwhelmingly go more with the white name. So that is a form of systemic bias, and that's a point about identity politics where it makes sense. And you're saying, hey, there's a bias here that shouldn't exist, and we should try to address that as a society. There's the, the online sales study. When you have a black hand holding a product trying to sell it versus a white hand holding the same product trying to sell it, the white hand gets picked way more often than the black hand. We've covered the points on the drug war where uh, black people and white people use drugs at a similar rate, but black people are arrested for it four times more often. White people are more likely to sell drugs. Black people are more likely to be arrested for selling drugs. So these are all identity politics focused points that are just factual where you say, okay, look, there's a bias here that's a problem and we should become aware of that and try to move towards a... a in equality-like situation where everything is better. But there has been, again, a bastardization of that where, you know, for example, you'll have activists who say, you know, we're, we need a safe space on a college campus to get away from the scourge of white supremacy, so we're asking for totally separate housing where only black students are allowed. Well, yeah, when, you know, people in the Midwest and when most people see that, they go, oh, so you, like, want segregation back, and you, you think that's a liberal position. So that's a bastardization of identity politics. We saw it during the primary when Hillary Clinton and her supporters accused Bernie Sanders supporters of being sexist Bernie bros. Right, the people who support the most liberal senator in our country who describes himself as a feminist and who is reliably, when you look at the policy positions he's for, on the proper side of the issues, right, the followers of him are sexist. No, you're doing it to make a hacky point. You're doing it to uh, try to... It's a bastardization of these serious issues that actually cheapens the issues. That's the thing that drives me crazy. It's like when you criticize Israel and some people say, oh, you're being an anti-Semite. I'm criticizing the right-wing government of Israel led by Netanyahu who just announced more land grabs, more illegal settlements, more occupation, further apartheid. So you're saying to criticize all those legitimate things. Well, that's, you know, you're an anti-Semite. It's like when I read an article in Huffington Post a few months ago. Uh, somebody was talking about how Trump's rhetoric against Saudi Arabia classifies as Islamophobia. Wait, what? Look, you got me that Trump's an anti-Muslim bigot based on the fact that he wants to ban all Muslims from coming into the U.S. Like, I got it. There's a bigot there, right? But when you say, no, the criticism of Saudi Arabia is Islamophobic. Saudi Arabia treats women as second-class citizens. Saudi Arabia doesn't allow women to drive. You know, Saudi Arabia beheads people in the public square for drug smuggling and sorcery and witchcraft. They say all atheists are terrorists. To criticize them isn't Islamophobic. To criticize them is intelligence. So, there has been a problem on the left where too often they pull, oh, that's racist, that's sexist, that's, you know, whatever, you fill in the blank with the, the specific flavor of bigotry and xenophobia. And when you pull that card too much and when you evoke, invoke it against people when it's not legitimate, yeah, you tend to... To lose people in the Midwest, you tend to lose white working class voters who, yes, feel like, fuck, man, I can't speak my mind. I can't speak out even a little bit against the, the, the orthodoxy, social justice warrior, if you will, orthodoxy on certain issues. So he's right. He's got a point on identity politics, man. Now, again, that's not to say that all identity politics are wrong and bad. I gave you multiple examples where there's a real problem that needs to be addressed. But we can't have a bastardization of cries of bigotry because then it's the boy who cried wolf. And then when there's an actual case of bigotry, but you did false cries of bigotries all this time, people go, ah, it's all bullshit. You know, how dare you call this person who's actually sexist, sexist. So many other people who weren't sexist were called sexist. So, ah, none of them are sexist. You know, same thing with racism, same thing with all the different forms of bigotry. So, I think Jim Webb has a point. Now, what that, what that means is the Democratic Party... 
and this is what we're trying to do with Justice Democrats. You have to focus on the issues and the issues alone. And if you focus on the issues and the issues alone, what that means is you're going to have, you're going to be able to address everybody's concerns. So for example, where there are real issues and where there's a real point to be made, uh, identity politics wise, where a group, a minority group is being discriminated against, you can make the point in a way that's palatable to everybody. So for example, like I just told you, the drug war is disproportionately used to crack down on minority communities. So if you say, let's free all nonviolent drug offenders, because they're not really criminals, <laughs> and you know, 58% of the American people want to legalize marijuana, we have a lot of conservatives with us on this point too. Guess what? You just made a legitimate point that includes a point on identity politics without having to feel like you're isolating anybody or kicking anybody out or spitting in anybody's eye or calling somebody racist. So when you focus on the policy, the death penalty is overwhelmingly disproportionately applied to uh, people of color. So if a white person and a black person commit the same crime, the same murder, let's say, very similar circumstances, the black person is overwhelmingly more likely to get the death penalty. Why is that? Gee, what's the difference between the white person and the black person? Fucking skin color. So there's a real point to be made there about racial bias in the system. How do you address that point? If you say, let's get rid of the death penalty, we get the wrong people all the time. It's just an immoral thing to have set up. You can't be killing the wrong people, that's crazy. So if you make the point to eliminate the death penalty, and you make it in that way, where all you're doing is focusing on policy and saying the exact things you want to do, well then I think there's no way we can be stopped, because the polls show that the American people are with us on almost every single goddamn issue. So the answer isn't, as Jim Webb puts it, the Democratic Party has moved too far to the left. That's, no, that's not the case at all. The Democratic Party needs to move to the left because that's where the American people are. They, they need to move further left, but along with moving further left and becoming more of a social democratic party, which again is what the Justice Democrats are trying to do, your only focus needs to be on policy substance. I think it's also condescending and pedantic and it's pandering to try to hit all the talking points. If you're a Democrat and you want to appeal to certain groups where like Hillary Clinton would try to craft these things, these phrases where it's like, I am now going to make a point to try to appeal to black voters and get the black vote. I am now going to make a point to try to appeal to women and get female voters. I am now going where you're trying to like, here's all my groups that support me. So let me try to craft this condescending message where I say, I care about you and I am talking about you. Do you see how much I care about you? No. That's identity politics run amok. What you actually have to do is only focus on policy substance and then everybody comes. You build it and they will come. Focus on policy substance and you'll get overwhelming majorities of people who say, you know what, they're talking sense, man. All they're talking about is, all they're talking about is making the minimum wage a living wage, which helps everybody. All they're talking about is ending the wars, which helps everybody. All they're talking about is single payer, which helps everybody. All they're talking about is free college, which helps everybody. All they're talking about is you go down the list of every single goddamn thing the American people believe, and we represent them. That's it. Simple revolutionary idea. So the Democratic Party needs to move further left on economic issues, on social issues, and own that. But just nip it in the bud, the identity politics run amok where it, there's a bastardization of identity politics, where you have, like, Hillary Clinton supporters calling Bernie Sanders supporters sexist Bernie bros. That's not true. They know that's not true. They're spitting in people's eye, and oftentimes when you have identity politics run amok, you're separating people more, and you're putting more people down, and you're never going to build a winning coalition that way. Focus on policy and policy alone, and move to the left on policy, and you win. This is why we need Justice Democrats. Go to justicedemocrats.com, sign up if you believe in this vision, and let's do our thing, man. You should run for office. You should run for office under that platform, under that banner, and we should take over the Democratic Party and kick out the corporatists and kick out the people who are going to use identity politics for nefarious reasons.